And that's why when people sit back and say, well, Jesus didn't say nothing about this. He didn't say nothing about that. No, they don't understand that Jesus was God. He was God's son. He came into this world and he knew he lived and breathed the scriptures. And it was addressed in the Bible. And he, and he calls us to, to understand that. That's what, an amazing thing to understanding about Christ. Jesus was with God from the beginning. The word made flesh. As our creed says, born of the virgin. Lived a perfect and sinless life. Died on the cross for our sins. To redeem the world. Was raised to life for three days later. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed that Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I hope our children have got that memorized, okay? We want to have that deeply ingrained in them. Okay, He sits at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, was present in the beginning in all this, you know? And it was there, and the Spirit is not a force or some kind of energy like you would see in Star Wars. He is a distinct person, but yet part of the great one and three that God did. And 2 Corinthians 3.17 says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let me tell you, you don't know what freedom is until you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're free from fear. You're free from all the things that this world will put, put upon you. And you can tap more and more into that freedom if you got God's Spirit. The Trinity is a mystery. Okay. Do you understand it a little bit better now, maybe? Are you beginning to understand or see it? <laughs> Trying to help us here. But I will tell you, and I tell people all the time, and you've heard me say this before, that the most meaningful things in life are mysteries. Okay? Uh, it says here in Proverbs, There are three things which are too wonderful for me, yes, four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on the rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Yeah, I can look at those birds flying. I hear the little birds, you see them building a little nest outside under my porch, and it's amazing, you know. And, but, but, but it's just amazing. I don't understand how they just seem to know how to do these things. It's a miracle of creation of God. I understand about serpents being on a rock. Have you ever seen a serpent on a rock? You know, you better get out of Dodge. Okay, I mean, it's, it's, it, but it's amazing, it's enchanting, okay? And then, you know, the love between a man and a woman. I mean, who knows, you know, how can you, how can you describe that? To be able to look in somebody's eyes and say, you know, that I'll be yours forever and forever, okay, and to death of this part, sickness and health. And, um, and it's an amazing thing, and I've been amazed as I've seen a lot of older people who, you know, even in their older years, it seems like they love each other more and more. It's very, very, very special. But the, mis the, the point of this is this right here, is that mystery and things that we don't quite understand, we kind of understand, we're always trying to understand, are the most meaningful things in life that bring meaningful things to purpose to us. I mean, you know, life doesn't consist of how many breaths you take, but how many breathless moments you have and experience. That's life. There's a story about... St. Augustine of Hippo, probably one of the greatest intellectual forces in the early church, lived about three or 400 A.D. that time frame, widely respected, well-known. I say he was walking along the seashore one day, and he saw a girl, probably about the age of Stephanie, and she was kneeling down with a cup trying to get some water. And he said to the little girl, he knelt down beside her, and he said, what makes you think, why do you think you can get this big C in this little tiny cup? And the little girl put her hand up on his head and said, what makes you think that you can get this big, wonderful God inside that tiny little head of yours? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Children got a way of speaking the truth. I mean, really. I mean, you got to listen to the young ones, okay? They, they have a, they have a, a way about understanding things that's not polluted by all the baggage of life, okay? We not, may not be able to understand the how of the Trinity, but it's important we need to understand the why. Augustine said, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in that wonderful, perfect relationship with the Holy Trinity, 
invites us into that too. We're restless until we come into that. That's the whole purpose of our life, is to have our life filled with God, with the Spirit, that takes us through this life, helps us in this fallen world we live in, and helps us win other people to Jesus, to make the world a better place, and on into eternity. Anthropologists and people who study human uh, cultures and religions have said that societies tend to be like the God they believe in. Warrior gods tend to produce war like people. We see that all the time. Okay? People who worship a God of wrath tend to be wrathful people. Has anybody been watching the news? But people who serve Jesus Christ, Yahweh, the God of love, they're like him. And that is the big difference. Don't let anybody ever tell you that, hey, we just like them or we got a lot of similarities. Be in conversation with them, but see it as an opportunity to show them the way, the truth, and the life. Our lives should reflect the Trinity. Can you think of anything more wonderful than living a life with Jesus in you? Living a life of the Holy Spirit in you? And living life as a co-creator with God? You see, God has created us and made us new. And we are to be about making things new. It's in Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. That's the hope of humanity and the hope of the human race. It's the love of God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus being alive in our hearts today. In the book of Romans, Paul reminds us that we have received the spirit of adoption. We are sons and daughters of God. And the Holy Spirit, the love between the Father and the Son, makes us holy. The Holy Spirit makes possible the wholeness or oneness in us to enable Christ to work through us. Yes, God uses us and works through us in the power of the Spirit to save other people. Yes, Jesus saves, but He uses us. He's got work for us to do. It's not something that we just kick back on. We've got a task ahead of us. And um, every day we should thank God for the beauty of creation, for the wonderful world we live in, and the gift of one another. We were born with the potential to realize the kingdom of God in the here and the now. We are becoming more and more like God every day when we cooperate with God and reflect the unity of the Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The love of God and the Holy Spirit is the most dynamic force in the universe. It's the dynamo that drives the universe. And it's something that we really need to tap into. It says here in Romans 8, and I'll conclude with this. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, the spirit raised him from the dead, God's spirit, dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in you. Yes, we can through the power of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, Jesus in our life, abide in Jesus. And we can begin to experience that foretaste of glory divine that we hear in that song, Blessed Assurance. Well, what a foretaste of glory divine. We can have life assurance now. You've heard me say it before, and it's not original with me. Salvation is not a fire insurance policy. It's a life assurance policy. Okay? Amen. That's very, very important to understand that. And that is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. That wasn't too long, was it? <laughs> All right. So now um, we will have our uh, uh, affirmations of Christian faith, and then we'll have our hymn of response. So let us all now stand for the affirmation of the faith, the Apostles' Creed. And I will tell you before we recite this that this is what was deeply embedded in the hearts of the early Christians in the times of the Roman Empire when they were suffering very severe persecution. This is what they believe in the very core of their being. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffering under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Um, you may be seated.
color singing. That was beautiful. Okay. Okay. Now we're seeing the benediction. Dear Lord, thank you for this time of worship, dear God. For this wonderful singing. Dear God, thank you, dear God, for all your many, many blessings. Thank you for being holy, helping us to be holy. Thank you for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Dear God, help us to believe this building, dear God, determined to be steadfast in our faith and win other people to our Jesus. The world needs this now, this message, and what you're about, dear God, in this world more than ever. Help us to be faithful, we pray, dear God. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.